So there's a lot of people out there that are thinking and dreaming of living in Thailand and one of our top questions is what are the costs of living? And it's really hard to answer this directly and give you a rounded answer that applies to everybody because the costs are different depending on your lifestyle. But what I want to do in this vlog is present to you guys a very detailed budget of what we spend each month. I'm going to go to the supermarket and look at some individual products. I'm going to show you where we buy our water, where we buy our daily and monthly goods, and also some other little expenditure. I'm going to finish off the vlog with a very detailed spreadsheet that breaks down exactly our standard monthly budget here in rural Thailand. So it really does give you an idea for your retirement or when you come and move here, uh, how much you would actually spend. And you can compare that to maybe other vloggers that are covering Bangkok or Pattaya or other countries, of course. So let's go and prepare for an epic amount of detail on the products that we buy and use. So we're gonna show some people now how much things cost, okay? All right, so they got an idea of what, how much it costs to live in Thailand, because many people ask mummy and daddy, don't they? So let's see. So just as a quick one, I usually get our bread from Tesco. Um, I want to give you guys an idea of prices. Some things we obviously get from the supermarket, some things we grow, some things we get from the local market. This is 48 baht for a loaf of bread. Probably go through about three of these a week uh, between us as a family. Uh, not really keen on this kind of thin Thai bread that they have. It is cheaper, you get more for it's like, it's a cheaper price you get more bread but it's just not not as nice not as filling uh, but this is quite good quality bread emperor bread with uh mixed grains and seeds so yeah 48 baht so you spend 150 baht a week on bread and the other supermarket staple we'll have is chicken breast and so two of these uh in a bag will be around 50 baht and um, we'll go through one of them a day, one bag a day. So two chicken breasts a day at uh, 50 baht. Fresh vegetables here like pumpkins are not that cheap from the supermarket. So we'll get those from the local market. And as you can see, chicken is around 44 to 50 baht. So it's actually gone down a little bit now, a bit cheaper than, than usual. So I've got eight of those for now. How many eggs did you get, Tis? I got one, two, three, four, three, seven, eight, seven. Seven eggs? Yeah. That's a lot, Tis. The vegetables that we use a lot, we actually grow ourselves on the farm and any we don't grow, we would buy from the local market, not the supermarket. In terms of mangoes, which we go through a lot, we have 50 mango trees on our farm, but they only produce mangoes two months of the year. The rest of the time, we'll get mangoes from the village if they are available, and then if not, here at the supermarket. Just will always get his yogurt from the supermarket, won't you? Because he don't, oh, uh oh. All right, then he's getting lots. Lots of yogurt today. So how much are these, Tis? How much? How many pennies are they? Fifty-two. And these are two for eighty-five. So that's yogurt. So that'll do you for a week, won't it? So you vanilla ice cream, seventy baht. We'll go for one of those a week or so with me and the kids. And I usually get one of these for me. So that's one hundred and fifty baht. One of them. So obviously all this stuff you couldn't get fresh at the market. This is stuff you have to buy from the supermarket. And I want to give you guys an idea of the price of that. Some of you are thinking about living here. Some people are just interested to compare with back home. And uh, yeah, give you a bit of a price rundown. What's that you got? Some eggs and look at it. You got loads of eggs, haven't you? You saved those pennies yourself though, didn't you? And you worked hard for them, didn't you? Yeah. Because you helped mummy with Hugo. It's usually me and Tiss that'll do the shopping. Um, Camo don't really like it. Yeah. So we do the shopping, don't we Tiss? Yeah. The boys do it. And then finally, what we'll get from here is milk for our coffee. So we'll go through one or two of these in a week. Um, and these are 95 baht each. 95 baht for the milk. So two of those are spending 200 baht a week. <laughs> And then always we get red apples for tips. 31 baht. 
Got the chocolate chip cookies. These ones. Oh, this one. This one? Yeah. But I thought you liked the ones with chocolate chip inside. Yeah, but I did like, like that one too. Like both? Yeah. Right. So this is our standard weekly shop. You can see we've got bread, milk, chicken. The eggs obviously are made from our chickens. This has got yogurts, apples, some fruits, and the fresh vegetables we'll get from the market are homegrown. But this is what we will spend on average in, in a week in the supermarket. Uh, I haven't really added much here. Usually you may not get this. He's kind of just thrown that in. And uh, these ice pops he's thrown in. He's doubled his cookie rations, um, but that's fine. But yeah, this is very standard to what we all spend in a week at the supermarket shopping. All right, so the total there is 1,350 baht. So that's the average that we'll spend in a week at the supermarket. So in just a moment, my lovely wife is going to take us to a local market and we can see what they've got on offer. Then we're going to see where we get our water from. And finally, I'm going to break down the detailed cost of everything that we spend in a month in Thailand and give you an idea of a monthly budget. So one of the top questions that we receive on this channel, being a Thailand based channel, is about travel insurance. And you know what it's like, you sift through lots of different insurance policies, it's complicated, it's convoluted. We've finally found an insurer that kind of takes that pain away and we're happy to recommend. It's uh, Safety Wing. Safety Wing stood out to us because there's no complex forms, there's no pre-approvals and everything can be done online. Even or right up until the last minute, so even if you're on the plane and you've not got insurance yet, you can jump online and you can do it uh, with Safety Wing. The customer support has very fast response times, which is important to us. It's 45 seconds on the website and seven seconds in the chat. So when you want to get hold of somebody, you can. The main reason for me and Damo is that when you've got kids, you don't really want to buy four travel policies or health insurance policies. With Safety Wing, you can just buy two because with an adult policy, they give a child under 10 uh, for free. If that means when me and Damo travel, we just get mine and, and hers, and then Otis and Hugo are covered. So you can also cancel at any time with no reason necessary. And not only is it the most affordable insurance that we find, every time we compare, we always find Safety Wing consistently uh, affordable. But anywhere from five days, you can just pay for what you use, which is also uh, a big bonus. Their personal liability coverage is up to $25,000 and they provide full COVID coverage and mandatory quarantine coverage. So you can check out the link in the description, in the pinned comment, if you're going to be doing some traveling and need some health insurance, can't recommend them enough. And I hope that answers your question and do let us know how you get on with them. Please leave your feedback in the comments. Now, generally on petrol for Betty Blue, we'll spend uh, 1,000 baht per week. She's a bit of a guzzler and it obviously depends how much we use her and go out and about and deliver Damo's packages for her post because she has an online business, running to the shop and back, running the kids to school sometimes. So yeah, but about a thousand baht on petrol, that's B7 diesel. So you gotta add that into the mix. So as well as the supermarket, Damo will come to this local market once a week. Looks like it's only just started, we're a little bit early don't like to shoot at night time, just in the daytime. Um, so you've just got your fish, your local fish, your vegetables, um, a lot of homegrown stuff. Any carb? Yeah, I have. Oh, I have. I eat it. Oh, he's a duck. You'll come here once a week, won't you, babe? And how much do you usually spend? Two or three hundred baht once a week, yeah? <laughs> so you got Kanom, Kanom Thai Law, Wan Law. So this is just uh, Thai sweet. So she'll come here, about, say 300 baht a week, will be spent here at the local market on vegetable. And you've got your delicious pancakes. Very, very nice. Garlic, shallots, onions, all homegrown from the local market. How much for the garlic, babe? How bad? You should buy enough. So that's 20 baht for the garlic.
and then some fresh veg, basil. So also once a week I'll come and collect the water. This is five tanks, that's what I usually go through in a week, maybe a little bit less. And one tank is 12 baht. Uh, one tank is 12 baht. Um, so it's not breaking the bank exactly. And that's what we spend on the water. This is of course drinking water for making rice, um, giving to the animals to drink, the dogs, etc. And uh, yeah, we'll come here and get it it's just around the corner from where we live. So it's very useful. Okay everyone, so this is the spreadsheet that we're going to be taking a look at. I told you I was going to go into detail on these costs and this is detail. But this might seem a little bit over the top for some people, but I'm sure it'll be useful for other people. So we're going to be, I've put kind of a standard budget together. You can see here, it's just the standard budget. Um, this differs like throughout different months. Um, if we've had a very, you know, if we've been on holiday, we've been on trips, something like that then this is going to go up, of course. Um, some months we don't spend as much as this and it goes down, but I think this is a pretty general and standard budget that I'm offering you guys to take a look at today uh, in the hope that it may be useful for you if you're planning on moving here or, or whatnot. Now, each on the left-hand side here, we have each of the main costs in the pink here, and um, that, that is kind of summarized in, in this area. In this summary here so we're going to go through each item and let's just start with the fact that on here there is no item for rent so there is no rental category and that's because we don't pay any rent we own our land we own our house but if you were coming to live in thailand then you'd have to factor in that and that would be a major cost so you can get a cheap room for five thousand baht eight thousand baht a month but you may be paying a lot more than that if you're having a pool villa or something in a very busy area. So you're gonna to have to factor that rent in here in your items. Also, if you have any debt, that's also gonna to have to be in your budget tracking, your monthly budget. So that's just two things to consider. Um, let's start with the first item here is the electricity. So electricity here, I have around 5,000 baht. And um, the electricity will go up to this level, like if we're using the aircon. But if we don't use the aircon, it will be half this. And obviously, depending on the size of your house and room, you, you probably find electricity, if it's a small room, is 2,000 to 6,000. Uh, but if it's a big villa, it's going to be 5,000 up. Uh, this electricity amount here covers for everybody on the farm. So Damo's mum, Damo's dad, all of the kids. Um, next, Tesco. As you've just seen, we just spent 1,300, 1,400 baht in Tesco. But the usual spend is around 2,000 baht. So you can see four weeks in the month here, you got 2,000, 2,000, 2,000 is making 8,000 baht. And that is reflected here in the summary, 8,000 baht a month in Tesco on our supermarket shopping. So next one is 7-Eleven. So every now and again, once a week, we'll go to 7-Eleven. You end up just dropping in, getting some coffee, getting some snacks. So we're paying, usually one of the, each trip will be around 500 baht if you don't go mad. It's easy to go mad in 7-Eleven. If you're going to budget yourself properly, you've got to resist the temptation to go mad. So about 2,000 baht in 7-Eleven each, uh, each month. Now, if you're a drinker and you're going in there for beer and stuff, you're going to get your beer run, that would be included in, in something like 7-Eleven and Tesco. You would include your beer. We're non-drinkers, so there is no cost for that. And also non-smokers, so there's no cost for cigarettes and things like that. Obviously, you would put that in with your budget you put the alcohol costs, the going out costs, and the cigarette costs, or whatever it is your vice uh, would go in, in here. Eating out on trips as a family, we like to go to cafes, have coffee and cake. Sometimes we'll go to the little swimming pool, the local swimming pool. 
We spend around 6,000 baht on this. Sometimes it can go up if we go on a big trip, you know, we're staying in a nice hotel somewhere. But just as a general day-to-day, month-to-month rule, it's around 6,000 baht. Next is markets. Markets, you've got four times a week, as Dama just showed you, 300 baht for the markets each time. And that amounts to 1,200 baht on the market. That's just here. Um, you Again, you can go a bit mad on the markets, but we tend to um, just buy what we need. And we offset, I think this costs maybe double, triple, if we didn't grow some stuff ourselves and have our, our own hens laying the eggs. So this will probably be double or triple because we would buy a lot of eggs and we don't have to buy that stuff and we grow a lot of stuff ourselves. So uh, this cost is reduced slightly and you may want to increase it if you're not going to have your own hens and your own chickens and stuff. Now for the car, I just told you petrol was 1,000 baht a week, but I think that's probably a bit high. It's probably around 2,500 to 3,000 a month. But I put 4,000 in here because sometimes I get the car washed. And that'll be 400 baht time for a good wash and wax. And so I thought I'd, that kind of covers the car wash too and any oil that I might need topping up in it. So 4,000 baht there. Now, baby Hugo, if you don't have a baby, obviously you're not going to have this cost, but his milk powder formula and nappies and things like that comes to around 2,500 baht a month. So this cost would be wiped off for you. Now we also homeschool and if you don't homeschool, you wouldn't have this cost, but I spend around 1,500 baht on Tissy's homeschool. So this is things like models and books and crayons. We build models twice a week. And so that has a cost associated. Sometimes this will be very high because it'll include a school trip, like a homeschool trip, or it'll be something big that I bought for something special like the iPad or something like that. But as a general rule, it's 1,500 a month. Health insurance, this is private insurance for all of the family. So this includes me, Damo, Hugo and Otis. Um, that's around 6,000 baht a month. I pay mine yearly and I pay theirs monthly for a, a company that we use here. Your insurance is going to be a bigger cost if you're older. So your monthly is going to be a bigger cost if you're older. And if you, if you have a family, if you're a single living out here, but you probably wouldn't be living this lifestyle and this budget wouldn't really apply to you. This applies to really a small family or somebody living in rural Thailand. And this health insurance would be higher anyway for somebody under those circumstances. Now you might not have animals and keep animals, but we do. And we spend 750 on the rabbit food, 400 on the chicken food, which also the turkeys and the ducks eat uh, per month. Sometimes this is higher. Uh, I, I feel like I've probably put a little bit too little in there. I might change it a little bit there. Pig food, uh, 500. We have dog food at 500 baht. Ramen rice, which is also what we supplement the pig food and the chicken food with. Uh, that's rice bran and then white rice that's 500 and then canned dog dog food which is the fish the 250 baht which we give as a treat to the dogs so I spend that about per month 3,000 baht for the animals sometimes that comes in a little bit higher but it's, it's, a, it's about the, the average spend special foods this is like coffee and honey and just little things like popcorn that we might buy um, that we spend 900 baht on. Then our phones, topping up phones, things like that, um, is 1000 baht. And then garden projects, you see we do a lot of projects in the garden, growing the cannabis and things like that is 3000 baht a month for any kind of little project that we might be doing, something we need a fence fixing, something like that, maintenance. Entertainment, so we don't go out a lot. So this is like kind of Netflix or something that we might have a subscription to as a family. And then donations, so this is the money we'll give away. So this is to like friends that I have in, still in Bali from years ago that just earn next to nothing in these horrible jobs that they do. So I'll send them a little something or you know, if somebody needs something, you're buying a gift or surprising somebody something, it's around 3,000 baht in donations. So that gives us a grand total here of 48,800 baht as a basic monthly spend. Now, this is for a family, remember, and sometimes like in our shop, we'll, I'll buy for the other kids. So there's like four or five other kids as you've seen. So that 
that inflates our costs. Like some people might look at that and think, oh, it's a lot of spending uh, per month. Up here in this allocation, I have what I call an emergency budget. So the emergency budget is a little bit different to the standard budget. And I, I think that if we really needed to cut back uh, and, and live on the emergency budget, it would be around 25,000 baht. And that would involve cutting out things like homeschool spend and it would reduce the food that the animals eat. No special foods, no projects, no donations, no eating out to cafes and things like that. We would reduce all of that and it would cut us down to around 25,000 baht. But that would be living like, that'd be tough living guys. Like that'd be like really over the top. This budget here is a very comfortable, happy, a very uh, luxurious in many ways because the way we live is quite free and you know we don't worry about spending uh, as it is. Uh, we try also to save every month. Now if you look at the pie chart here you can see like what is the allocation. And here we have a breakdown of the percentage of our spending. So here you can see medical insurance actually is quite a, a chunk. It's nearly as much as our spend on food in the supermarket in Tesco. And that will be the same for you if you go for private insurance. Now, entertainment is quite low. If you're a person that goes out and likes to party, then entertainment is obviously going to be higher. Animals would be eliminated if you didn't have any animals, and so would baby Hugo. And then the car to run is, is a big one. And then eating out, out, eating out and trips is quite a big pie there. And, but we wouldn't eliminate that because we get off the farm as a family and we go and do stuff. And, you know, it's, it's always fun and interesting. So this is really detailed. Um, could you live on less in rural Thailand? Absolutely. Many people live here. The locals will live here on 10,000 baht per month. They will live... Um, I think Damo's mum lives on around 15 to 20,000 baht a month. So we could live on 25,000 baht a month, but I'm giving you a comfortable budget here. So if we take that by the year, that's 585,000 baht per year for this very comfortable uh, budget. If we were living on the emergency budget, we'd take that down to 300,000 baht per year. That's for living on on the real cheap, which you, you definitely could do. If, if I show you, if I eliminate um, the donations and I eliminate entertainment, uh, take away the projects, you know, no special foods, reduce the animal uh, food, we reduce, we would probably keep the health insurance because it's just one of those necessities, but you cut down the homeschool budget, you keep baby Hugo's budget, cut down your travel because you wouldn't be going out as much. The markets would stay the same. You would have less eating out and trips. Uh, you certainly wouldn't be going to 7-Eleven and you could reduce your Tesco um, trips quite substantially, you know, cut back on the ice cream, chill out a little bit and turn the aircon off. So here's the big change you see here is 23,900, which is a perfectly reasonable monthly budget if you were you know, really trying to live frugally. It's absolutely achievable. Um, however, you know, your day-to-day -day life would be, you just, you wouldn't be able to go out so much. I don't know if it'd be exciting for the kids. Um, you know, you would be shopping on a, on a budget at the supermarket. You know, the animals would just be getting by. You'd be supplementing the food with banana trees and other things more. But that's doable, guys. I'm not going to say it's not doable, and many of the expats out there do that, um, maybe even cheaper than that. So if you are an expat and you've watched this to the end, please do leave what your monthly spend is in the comments so other people can see and learn from that. I hope this has been interesting and informative for you guys, even if you're not wanting to be an expat and you're just interested to see how much it is to live in Thailand, what can, can be done and what can't be done. Um, so I hope it's been interesting for you. Thanks for subscribing, hitting the like button if you like content like this, because the more of you that like it, the more kind of, the more I'm going to produce content like this for you. If it's not very popular, I'll go in a different direction. So hope it's been useful, guys. Thanks a lot.